So my business partner Jake and I have studios on opposite sides of the Atlantic. Jake's in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm on the south coast of England. Uh, we've collaborated remotely for over 10 years now. We were looking to do something a little bit more live, so you know, if we wanted to work on a mix together to be able to do it live with video chat and be able to share the mix and listen in high quality, um, or post-production, be able to talk about work that we're doing to videos and stuff like that. So we did a bit of research and came up with three software uh, programs to look at, and I thought in this video I'd take you through our process, a quick overview of the three um, software programs and just our conclusions and our thoughts on those videos. I hope it helps. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start with a session wire setup. So I will just open up a little Ableton track. When you download session wire from the website, it installs a couple of drivers. So you just need to make sure when you set up your DW that you select those drivers to send the audio to and to receive the audio from. Once you've got the DAW set up, when it's working, just open up Session Wire Studio. And this is the screen you're confronted with. When you open it up, there's my gorgeous face. Um, nice adjustable size to the screen. This is obviously my side with a talkback you can see um, it goes green in the top right of my screen. Um, a share screen function, so I can see the same screen, add infinitum, so you can show people what you're working on, and then you can mute the video, I guess if the audio is not very stable or if it's irritating. Um, on this side is your client or your, whoever you're connecting with. Um, the people that you are contacts with will show as a list down here. It will show you whether they're online or not. All the connecting with clients and stuff like that happens on the uh, SessionWire website, your account there, you invite people by email. You can have guest accounts so they don't have to pay, but you are limited in that the guests can't call you, you have to call them, which is not much of a limit. But In terms of the setup, when you first get started, um, obviously with your sound card, you have these as the main audio ins and outs, and then wherever you're your live listen function, your monitoring, you want to go through that channel for this one and wherever your talkback is, you want to go through that channel. If you want to record the audio coming in over the network, you click this button and it will set up an aggregate device, which is like a multi-in, multi-out that appears in your audio MIDI setup, which you can then identify what channels you want to come from and to session wire. So that's the basics of it. Um, and yeah, we found it to be an enjoyable process working with this software. As you can see from me flicking the window around, it's best if you have two screens that you're working with to keep it out of the way of the session. This is a sped up video of us sending audio across the ocean to each other. I won't bore you with the full length video, but it worked a dream. We did use it on a client in New Zealand and found that there was an issue because her internet wasn't fast enough although it was fast enough for another software that we're reviewing later on. Okay, so that's Session Wire. So let's move on to the next software, the Sound Whale. Now you'll be able to tell from the software as it opens up that this is, while it's uh, the same concept as Session Wire, it is a lot more involved. First off, this is similar to Session Wire here. Contacts are listed, you connect with them, by clicking this link and then you get three different ways of connecting. There's video chat, video stream and audio stream. Video chat is the same as the session wire setup in that you see their pretty face on the screen here. You can mute audio, you can mute the video, you can share your screen. The other, the other two are video stream and audio stream. So you have control over whether the audio that you're working on is sent to them. But also, which you don't get in session wire, is a video streaming functionality. You can find a film, load it up, hit play, and this is live streaming, and the sync quality is great. This is shared with your client or whoever you're connected with. So here's a video of uh, Jake, my business partner, and I earlier watching this video together, and uh, obviously you can comment through the video, but you can also 
I love this. You can also leave time-stamped comments in the chat. So comments that pertain to a really specific point of the video uh, and then the recipient can come back to them later and know exactly kind of what the comment was referring to. The list of features in Soundwell is way too long to go into any depth on this video. But some of the standouts to me are the routing mixer and you can kind of select what audio is streamed from that mixer window and then send that to your client. You can include like the live recording but also replays of recordings that you've already made. As you can see in this clip here, the green and white waveform at the bottom is one that Jake sent to me over the network and it showed up on my timeline on the right hand side there. I love the MIDI channel. You can set up virtual tracks in your door and then you can live stream MIDI to one another so you can play the soft synth of the person on the other end, for example. So that's Sound Whale. Okay, so let's try the last one. Audio Movers Listen To software. Audio Mover have taken a slightly different approach to the other two software companies in that they've made plugins um, that go directly into your DAW. Now this is restrictive in some senses because as you might notice there's no talkback, there's no video capabilities, it's literally just direct audio streaming from the DAW to the client. It works both ways so this is the send plugin and there is also a receive plugin. Um, both of them are switched off at the moment. Essentially you just need to log in with a single click and start transmission and it's sending. So whatever I said now, you see the levels going out on that transmission. Copy the link, post it to whoever is receiving and they paste the link here, click connect on their end and they receive the audio that you're streaming. I love that you can change the audio quality from Apple compressed to fully uncompressed and you can change the latency. I also like that you can put the plugin anywhere on your DAW. So if you want them to listen to the master bus, you put it on the master bus. If you want them just to listen to a single track, a specific track, you can put it on there. You can actually have the plug-in uh, multiple times in the DAW and the listener can select where they want to hear uh, the stream. So if, if you had it on the master bus and say audio one, the client would receive on this drop down menu uh, stereo bus audio one or whatever is represented and they can select what they're listening to. Um, so this is this software is massively simple. Um, this was far and away the easiest setup of the lot. Um, obviously you are lacking uh, talkback and you are lacking video or any kind of communication. This is literally just the audio being sent from your DAW to wherever they're receiving it, their DAW. But what we ended up doing was just opening up Skype or Zoom or FaceTime and we could talk live that way and the audio will be just going through this. Yeah, that's coming through crystal clear, my end. Just wanted to give some final thoughts before we end the video, give some pros and cons of each of the softwares. The Session Wire, this one looked the sexiest, it was the most pro and kind of simple all in one package. The audio quality was excellent, stability was excellent as long as you had good internet service. The cons of this were with the lack of flexibility with the streaming levels. So as I mentioned before, we worked with a client in New Zealand, we tried to use the session wire, but her internet wasn't fast enough to work properly and there was nothing we could do about changing the quality of the audio or the video streaming to be able to help out in that aspect. That's just a small con really, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is you have to have video and talkback inputs for the chat side of session wire. You can't just use it for the uh, master out streaming side of it. It just won't work if there's not a camera connected and that's just additional expenditure if you uh, wanted to use it and you don't have webcam facilities. Soundwell is by far the most flexible setup out of the three. 
the stuff you can do with this software just had me a little gobsmacked really being able to sync live stream video and comment timestamp comment send midi live across a network record on a network sync ios app and the browser based stream viewing capabilities which means you can basically give feedback for projects anywhere you have a phone with you which is incredible the other thing about sound whale is it's really aimed at post-production composers that kind of thing and it's absolutely fantastic for that being able to live stream a video with the audio and kind of talk about it and adjust the audio within the kind of live stream it's, it's just absolutely phenomenal really impressive and i can see this being really useful in tv studios and composers uh, working for tv and film the cons with uh, sound whale are that because it is so flexible that comes with a cost and it's quite complex to to set up the routing and to maintain a smooth process is is quite complicated i found it quite complicated the software doesn't feel completely finished to me there's quite a lot of multi-step instructions to get uh, where you want to get to and there are a lot of things that you have to look out for to make everything work smoothly the manual contains a lot of instructions that kind of say expect this glitch and this is the workaround if the video chat freezes then wiggle it up and down if you're on a mac pro you have to adjust the audio preferences this way otherwise it'll just crash i think if you're going to charge for the software it feels to me like it needs to be a bit more complete than this a little bit more smooth running but the potential for this software if they can stabilize it a bit and uh, make it more ergonomic is is absolutely mind blowing. Could be really really useful. The audio movies listened to is probably the polar opposite to Sound Whale in that it's by far the simplest setup. As Jake, my partner, and I played around with these softwares, uh, audio movies we got up and running immediately within five minutes. Didn't need any thinking or any head scratching or manual browsing to get set up. It was just done. There wasn't anything tricky about it. If you've got any experience with DAWs, then you can use this. We were really impressed with the sound quality. It's top notched. The stability was excellent. The latency is excellent. I love that you can change the audio quality and latency if they're not important. For example, if you're teaching and you just need to show someone something quickly or if you're doing just a quick mix overview for someone and the audio quality doesn't need to be that good but it needs to be a stable a stream data stream then just having that capability is is brilliant and in terms of cons i can't really think of any to be honest i guess having to use two softwares rather than having it all in one package could be seen as a bit of a pain in the ass but it didn't bother us when we were using it so thanks for watching the video i hope you found it a little bit helpful um, if you have any questions, please post in the comments below. And I'll do my best to answer. Um, and I'm going to post links to the three different programs below so you can do your own research. Um, we're probably going to do more videos like this in the near future based on kind of um, collaborating remotely. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, please subscribe. And we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Cheers.